man, we're going to be kicking back off, y'all, with j -Bad. I came a year ago, man, and the Lord put on my spirit a message of j -Bad, man. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's least talked about in the Bible. Somebody that we don't know too much about, y'all. We only given a couple of sentences about j -Bad. j -Bad's thought was harsh. It was crucial. But God did a work that if you would have told j -Bad, he wouldn't believe, man. With a simple prayer, y'all, he changed every single thing in his life. His whole direction changed, y'all. Not only for him, but for those that surround him. I believe he changed even his mind, man. We're going to get into it. <laughs> because God is awesome. It's not how it start, but it's how it finish, y'all. It's how it finish. And that's what I love about my God, because when I look back on my life and how it started for me, <laughs> and I see now with the most hard and done, y'all, it amazes me every single time. Because I know where I'm supposed to be, y'all. I know I'm supposed to be Joseph, and I know I'm supposed to be doing time, man. Eh? This is nothing but the most high. Nothing but his grace and his mercy, Shane. You seen it, you watched it. <laughs> For his glory. So I'm gonna go ahead on and read the text, y'all. We coming out of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. The Bible said, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jab Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, y'all, <laughs> saying, oh, that you would bless me, not just bless me, but bless me indeed. If you would just bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be upon me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So the Bible say, so God granted him what he requested. Ooh, God, we thank you, God, for answering prayer. God, we thank you for this little text that you put in this scripture out of nowhere, Father Lord, a bright spot in the family of Judah, God. Ooh, out of nowhere, God, we Tom commentators and, and, and oh, God, even them that study it from back to front can't understand, God, where this story come from. But that I ask that you reveal it today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you got a purpose under the heavens for every single thing that you do. Nothing is arbitrary, God. And this text here, God, is a picture Ooh, of what you, for the Lord, ooh, fixed in your heart to do, God, even before the foundations of the world. And we thank you for showing it, even in the life of Jabez, God, revealing your hand, <laughs> ooh, your mistress from the Garden of Eden, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, y'all, we're going to get into it, and I'm going to just recap quick, man. Last time, man, we talked about this j Bash, y'all. In the title of this message, man, I said, you know what I'm saying? Let me go back. Let me go back. j Bash. The title, y'all, was A Heart Determined to See Change. Remember that, Paulie? A heart determined. Who? Determined to see change. Change, change in his own life, but also change in the lives of others. Because if there's no change, what are we doing this for, Paulie? We playing? If there's no change, what are we doing this for? You know what I'm saying? Jabez had a heart determined to see change. The heart of Jabez. And we just went into it, and I'm going to just give a little, a little quick you know what I'm saying? Recap just to let you know where we was and where we going. We started just by talking about Philadelphia, Dallas, man. God dropped a revelation on me. You know what I'm saying? Because you think you're here by accident. 
You think that God missed it. You think that this was all by, 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 by some chance that this happened. God don't do nothing by chance, man. <laughs> he got a plan and a purpose for Philly Dallas, man. In Dallas right now is the season and the time for it. Expansion. Who an enlargement of territory. Who a changing of the gods that's happening, Paul, that we talked about last time. And you might not can't see it, but I can see it for you. You might not can't see it, man, but I can see it for you. I get not excited just to get excited, y'all. I know what the hope of glory is capable of doing, man. I know this, y'all. You know, and we talked about it. I said, I was there, man. I remember when God gave birth to Dallas through a conference, man, that pastor, the bishop, bishop preached, y'all. You know what I'm saying? A message called Roe versus Wade. And we talked about that, talking about abortion, the strategy of Satan to kill the babies in the womb. And we said specifically targeting our babies. To kill our prophets, our prophetess, y'all, while they are yet in the womb. And I told you, God gave me a revelation. I said, just like Satan desired to kill these babies while they was yet in the womb, it was the same desire he had for this church of Philadelphia, Dallas. When it was a thought, when it was just a word and conversation spoken, when it was yet in the womb. He wanted to destroy it, sis. He wanted to destroy it. So I'm not surprised with the struggle that you find yourself in. <laughs> but anybody know anything about the women of God who struggled for anything in the Bible, who was barren? They brought, they brought forth men child, man child. Ooh, go ask Hannah about it. Go ask Rachel about it. Go ask Rebecca about it. Anytime you struggle for anything, man, you think it being hard is a curse, but it's really a blessing. <laughs> it's really a blessing. You look at other churches and you see and you like, you don't know how blessed you are. You don't know what you're about to do. You don't know what the struggle brings, man. Satan wanted to in this church, wanted to kill this church while it was yet in the womb. And we talked about it. You know what I'm saying? How there's a season of Joshua that's upon us, yo. We talked about Dallas being a word city, a hub for the word. All kind of sim 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 uh, <laughs> theology schools and seminary classes and all these things. You know what I'm saying? Even God raised up some Moseses that are brought forth before you and our people to keep our people. You know what I'm saying? And Bishop T.D. Jakes and Tony Evans, you know what I'm saying? I told you that. You know what I'm saying? But it's a Joshua moment. You see, all Moses was there is to bring the people out of, 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 the, of, ooh, out of slavery and to keep the people, hold the people. But it would be Joshua who would bring them into the promised land. It would be Joshua who would allow them to pass out, yo, the land, the promise, the blessing that was always there is that God been prophesied to Abraham. It came forth in the days of Joshua, not in the days of Moses. <laughs> Ooh, God is a Joshua season, man. Moses, my servant, is dead. Mm. The same way I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you, God said. That's what he told Joshua. And we just recapping. You don't understand what type of anointing you have. Who, not only in this church, but I'm talking on an individual level as well. As well. Because God going to use you. God got a purpose and a plan for you. Who he going to move some things for you in these last days? You got a Joshua anointing. You know what I'm saying? And we talked about that, man. 
And we went deep into that. And I just want to shift, man, and just hurry up and talk about a, a, a word God gave me. You know what I'm saying? I have in my notes just a word in concerning of what the Most High is doing within the world right now, y'all. Not only within the world, but within the church. Not only within the church, y'all, but even within our individual lives. Understand that God, y'all, is who? Understand that, that God is fulfilling a promise that he spoke. And that he mentioned in the New Testament, y'all, in the book of Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? The book of Hebrews, he talked about a future days and times where he would shake the heavens and the earth one more time, y'all. One more time. He would shake the heavens and the earth one more time. Why, y'all? So that everything that's shakable could be removed. And the things that's unshakable remain. The only thing I have in my notes that's going to remain is truth, y'all. You see, if you're not operating in truth right now, your church going to die, man. The season and the direction God is going. I know you see the mega churches. I know you see all that. But I'm telling you about a season that's coming. Only truth going to survive. You see, in Revelation, God said, God began to speak. God said, he said, I'm going to bring strong delusion upon the earth. And he said, them that, 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 that don't love the truth. Because you see, the truth that we preach and y'all, a lot of pastors know about it. Even them that you know, that's popular. But they refuse to preach the truth. They refuse to preach the truth. Why? Because they don't want to see their numbers go down, but they don't understand where the spirit is going. It's the spirit that draws the people. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men. A lot of churches, you about to see Ichabod. Who? God, the glory is gone, man. And you're watching it even now, right before your eyes. You're watching the glory depart. You're watching the glory leave, man. Whoo. And like a dove, that glory is going to find a Joshua, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> You're a part of a movement, man. You're a part of something big, man. Telling you, Miss Tara. <laughs> I get excited when I think about this and when I talk to the master in my secret place and how he speaks to me and shows me, man. You know what I'm saying? And he no respect a person. He are ready to do it for you, too. Because I'm not nothing but dirt, nothing but dust, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So understand that. That it's a shaking that's taking place. And it's a shaking that's going on within the world. You see the shaking. The shaking started with COVID. <laughs> and he going to continue to shake. You see the up spike in immorality in the world. That's a shaking. A lot of people pointing to the devil. But they don't understand that God is shaking. They don't understand that God is shaking. We blaming the devil for everything, but we don't have discernment to see the most high fulfilling his word. <laughs> Can I take my time? Because this thing is heavy. Can I take my time? We going to get into the scripture. I got some things for you, but let me speak this real to you right quick. Let me show you what's going on. Let me peel back the heavens for you. Not show you what the devil doing. Let me show you what God is doing. Ooh, that's what we need to know, what he doing. I ain't worrying about what the devil doing, what my master doing, what you doing, daddy, in the earth. A lot of people worrying about what the devil doing. We already know the end of the devil, man. We already know the end, what the father is doing, what he doing. It's a shaking that's taking place, y'all. A shaking that he promised. In the book of Hebrews, he mentioned it. 
You know what I'm saying? But it's a shaking that goes all the way back to the Old Testament, to the book of Haggai. And I'm going to just read it to you because you think there's some new thing. Nah, God just mentioned this in the New Testament. He been had that on his heart. He been said, I'm going to shake some things, Shane. He been prophesying it through the prophets of old, way in the Old Testament, letting us know. It's in the book of Haggai. Who is Haggai? A minor prophet in his days. What did he say? He looked out at Israel. Who, who was in bondage? Who was, who was operating as heathens among the, dencha, among the Gentiles? Go read Haggai. Haggai got so mad, he said, God. He said, God, what you going to do, God? He began to be cry out to God and complain to God and say, man, you ain't doing nothing. They're killing one another. Had God said they're killing one another, black on black crime, they're doing all manner of wickedness. Them who supposed to have the oracles of God upon them. Had God was crying out to God. And we know the scripture God told him, write the, write the vision and make it plain. Hey, God, I got some things coming down the pipeline, hey, God. And one of those things was, he said in Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 through 9, y'all. He said, for thus said the Lord of hosts, once more, it's a little, in a, in a little while, I will shake the heaven and earth and the sea and dry land. And I will shake all nations and they shall come to desire all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. He said, I'm going to shake it, Paul. I'm going to deal with the nations of men. And Haggai, this, this temple, this people that you're crying out about, I'm going to fill them with glory. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to fill them with glory. And he talks about it in Jeremiah, telling us that he's going to fill us up. He's going to pour out his spirit, man. The book of Joel talks about it as well, y'all. But it's all about a shaking that's going to happen. And we live in it right now. And this shaking is all about you, and you don't even understand. It's all about bringing you back to the place where you hear a danger to be. Where you supposed to be. You had prophets of old like Haggai crying out for you, man. Crying out for us. Crying out for our future generation, Paulie. We stand here because they was crying out. They were standing in the gap. Though they wouldn't get no answers and we going to see that. Oh, I got a message call that we would get back to being priests, man. The book of Joel talks about how the priest is going to have to begin to, who begin to tarry at the altar again. Begin to weep, he say. Begin to mourn, he say. That's all about prayer, Paul. <laughs> and that's what he's going to burden Dallas. Prayer. Prayer like you've never seen before. Huh, Shane? <laughs> oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And he's going to do it all for his glory, y'all. Not for our sake, but for his glory. His glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's get into this word now, y'all. Woo! Thank you. Lord, thank you for that. So, y'all, we talked about this heart of Jabez. Let's switch back and get into this message. right here. I need to read it again. I'm going to read it again. Now, Jabez was more honorable. Then, then his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bored him in pain. And Jabez called upon the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him his request. And we said, y'all, that this heart of Jabez Jabez had a heart determined and vexed to see change. Change not only in his own life, but change in the lives of others. We talked about how Jabez, man, 
Jabez was born into the world, y'all, with a stigma of a meaning upon him. He was born into the world with a stigma of a meaning upon his name, attached to his name, y'all, that meant pain and sorrow. And not only that, but the birth of Jabez also contributed to bringing pain and sorrow into the lives of the one he loved. The ones he loved. We talked about it. Sometimes we could be cool with bringing pain in our own lives. But it's, it's, it get real for us when we see that we bring in pain in the lives of the one. To bring your own mama pain? In there. Mama got to come see me, man. Shad could die, man. She crying, man, when they sentence me and give me time. What you think about them little boys that's out there, man, that's getting shot and killed, man? Bringing their mama what? Ooh, anguish, pain, and sorrow. What about the young ladies that's running wild, having babies, getting strung out there? You know what I'm saying? Getting caught up in the world. Why? Because they don't understand the guidance of the spirit. They're following the world. They're following the new trend. Who, when God then placed in their heart to be a trendsetter. But they don't understand. Man. <laughs> God then made them a leader, man. Beautiful women, beautiful young girls. Queens, y'all. Queens. Made to be body wife not no boo not no girlfriend body wife body wife you got a plan and a purpose for the men that's running out there two youngsters we come up with it like that bringing our mother pain and shame why because we want to grow up too fast we want to do what we want to do even from the older cats giving us wrong wisdom telling us you don't have three, two, four. You don't have more than one, Pauly. But they say, you're not a real man. <laughs> oh, God, you're not a real man. Who told you that? Man? Who told you that? Who told you that? <laughs> My God ain't told you that. Who told you that? Nah, Satan told you that whispering. Whispering so that through them that you look up to, them that you that you put on a standard that you're not supposed to, and we're gonna get it. Oh, we honor men too much, man. We honor women too much. We seek honor from one another instead of seeking honor that come from the most high God, man. We seek honor from men, man. We seek honor from women. Oh, God, when it's God who gives honor, he was more honorable than all. His the whole family of Judah, he was a spotlight in the family of Judah, Paul. They had some giants, some Vikings came out of Judah, man. But they was And out of all his brothers, David had his own genealogy in this text that we're talking about. Solomon had his own genealogy. Then it went to Judah. And out of all the brothers, we see Jabez more honorable. All his out of left field. And Jabez had a stigma upon him. He had pain and sorrow upon him. He was never supposed to be more honorable than all his brothers. It was not supposed to be said, Miss Tara. It was not supposed to be mentioned. The Satan had in his heart for Jabez pain and sorrow only. God turned it around. <laughs> no weapon formed against you going to prosper. It's not going to prosper when he's involved. When he's involved, when he's involved, who is not going to prosper? Is not going to prosper. Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. He contributed to the pain and sorrow in the lives of the one he loved, y'all. 
And I got in my, my notes for Jabez, this one that he loved was his very own mama. It was his very own mama, Paulie. And for a little boy, even grown men, your mama, and you'll die for your mama. You'll lay it all down for your mama. We love our wives, and we're supposed to let our wives take the mama place. Oh, God. But it's just something within men. You still going to love that mama. Oh, God. And it hurted Jabez. It hurt it, Jabez, and we're not going to get into the prayer specifically tonight. We're going to deal with that next week because I'm coming back, y'all. <laughs> I'm coming back, y'all, and we're going to go deep within the prayer. We're going to look at the prayer in every aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go deep into it. But tonight we want to deal with some other stuff. But he brought pain in the life of his mom, and that's what he prayed Remember, huh, Shane, we were talking about it. That was in his prayer. He said, let me not cause pain, Lord. Because he remembered. He remembered how he contributed to the pain of his mom. And he wasn't even born yet. He was in the wound, had nothing to really do. So imagine us who have something to do. We know what we're doing. We are the edge of accountability. Some of them I see out there that's homeless and, and they're in this place, they're in this rut. And I look them in their eyes and I tell them and I touch their hearts because I deal with the hearts of men. I don't like to deal with the intellect. You know what I'm saying? Jesus dealt with the hearts of men. I look them in their eye, Paul, and I tell them, you know that's not what your mama wanted. Oh, God, and they look at me. They look at me. And I got their attention, Paul. They know that's not what they want. And they didn't want to make their mama no pain for they, they didn't plan to be in that place, but it's a wake up call. Because you're causing pain in the life of the one you love. Because you love your mom. You love your mom. You love your mom, and you don't want to bring her pain. You don't want to bring her shame. You know what I'm saying? He say, honor thy mother and father. That your life be what? Long upon the earth, man. That's the scriptures, man. So as we line up this title with the scriptures, we begin to go in and talk about and see this heart of Jabez. How Jabez had a heart determined and vexed to see change, y'all. Not in his own life, but in the lives of others. And we begin to look at verse 10, y'all. And I'm just going through it, but I'm, we're going to get to where I want to get to. Y'all just follow me in the scripture. Woo! Be Bereans for a minute. You know what I'm saying? This very prayer of Jabez, y'all. When you read the prayer I have in my heart, you could tell a lot about a person's heart by listening to them pray. By listening to somebody pray, y'all. You could tell a lot about the heart. Because in prayer, they're going to spill out the heart. Ooh, God, that's deep. That's deep. You could tell a lot about a person's heart by listening to their prayer. Verse 10, it said, Jabez called upon the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand would be upon me. And we know, y'all, this, y'all, with no selfish prayer I have in my notes. Because why? It wasn't no selfish prayer because God don't answer selfish prayer. And we know that God answered. He answered the request of Jabez. And that's what the book, the Bible say in the book of James, man. James chapter 4, verse 3. It says you ask and do not receive. Why? Because you ask amiss. That you may spend it on your pleasure. You ask a miss. You got a selfish prayer. But that wouldn't the heart of Jabez. And we trying to line up our hearts, y'all, with Jabez. Paul, it talked about the heart. You know what I'm saying? And we went in and we talked about this word vex, y'all. 
And, and I told you that, that this word vex, I love it. It was deeper than determination, just having a determination of things. But it was even greater, y'all, because a, heart's that, a heart that's vexed is a heart that's desperate. A lot of times we're not desperate to see change. We're not desperate to see change within our hearts, y'all. We're not vexed. We're not vexed in our hearts. And I have in my note a heart that's vexed. It screams within itself, enough is enough. Enough is enough. That's what it screams when you've been in a place for so long, so much pain. You have vex. You can't. You have to see change, man. We talked about that. It's a heart that screams out, enough is enough. It's a heart that get to the point of saying, I must see change. I have in my notes, it's a heart that get to the point of saying, I have to see change, lest I die. Lest I die. Lest I die. We got to get to that place. Sometimes. We got to get to that place sometimes. And we talked about it. That was the heart of Jabez. And we talked about mothers that was barren, man, that didn't have children. We talked about Sarah, you know what I'm saying, for the Abraham wife. How she was barren. You know what I'm saying? We talked about Rachel, who declared to God. You know what I'm saying? We talked about, not Rachel, Hannah, who, who was barren, and God gave her a man child. We talked about Rachel, who declared to God, give me children, lest I die. And that's in Genesis 31. You can read that on your own time. Man. Because you're going to see a heart that's vexed. And you're going to see God answer. That's the type of heart Jabez had. And Ms. Don, Ms. Don, we see Jabez's prayer answered. Who? Because it was vexed before God. He got to the point where he had to have it. He must have it. Enough was enough. He said, Give me that Sada, man. He said, Oh, if you would bless me. That was the heart of Jabez. He didn't come to God playing. Nah, God knew and understood that Jabez was serious. Eh? Jabez was vexed within his heart, yo. And that's where he want to get us. And that's where we went in and we brought that to us as a people. We said that we got to have hearts determined and vexed to bring forth change within our people. Do you have a heart vexed? Do you have a heart that's desperate to see change in your people? Change in your people because that's the heart that God looking for. God tired, we talked about. It. God tired looking down and seeing his people, y'all. He's seeing his people, man, who, who's supposed to have the oracles of God upon them. And when you go deep and study that, they say that it was a prophecy spoken upon God's people that went so deep into their deep. Oh, God. And God looked down and see those people. He see them cutting up, wilding, doing all kind of manner of wickedness, y'all. Chasing money, doing this, doing that, fornicating, robbing, stealing, killing one another, jacking one another, y'all. And God looked down and God see no heart change. No heart change. Hearts dead as a rock, as a donut. But then we went deep and we said, God also want us to have hearts vexed and determined to bring forth change, not just in his people, but change within his church, y'all. In order for us to bring change into the world, among the lost that's in the world, those that's thirsty. You got homeboys and friends that's really thirsty for the Savior, man. You got homegirls that's thirsty. Even though they might not show it, even though they might shun it, their souls are thirsty, y'all. They thirsty. It's a dry land out there. They wandering out there. They looking for some water, Paulie. They thirsty, man. But you don't see it, though. Your heart content. 
And God, like you got them that right on the side of you that's going to hell, going to bust shit you wide open. They thirsty to know what you know. They thirsty to get what you got. They thirsty to drink what you're th- drinking, man. Listen to me, daddy. It's an evangelism time, man. It's an anointing upon you. You ain't even got to say too much. Just be in their presence and just live right and do right. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to talk to you, daddy. Ooh, hear the heart of the father, man. He want to see change in the church. And we went in. We went deep talking about it. Because God is tired looking down at his church, y'all. And seeing them gathering together, preaching abstract theology. Understanding all kind of metaphors and all kind of doctrines and all of these things, y'all. But no real heart change. (laughs) And we're going to get into that. We need discernment in these days. Because you got them that's preaching right, talking right. Know the right theology. Know all the doctrines. Know all these different things. Paulie, not even saved. <laughs> Don't even have a real relationship with the master, man. And their hearts telling on them right now. And we're going to get in touch. Their hearts telling on them right now, y'all. And he's going to continue to reveal. I just told that to minister and the other day when we was talking. Going deep because that's a prophet and me and him be running it. You're going to see a lot more fall, y'all. You're going to see a lot more fall. But remember what I said. Shaking. That God is doing. So that them that can be shaken could be removed. And only them that can be shaken going to remain. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, man. If I had to ask you, will you remain in this shaking? Will you remain in the shaking of churches? Will you remain in the shaking of men and women in the earth? Will you remain in the shaking, man, even that's going on within your own life? Within your own situation, shakings that's happening, man. Are you rooted? Are you founded on the rock tonight? Huh? Or are you going to be removed? Or are you going to move your candlestick? Oh, God, don't make me get into revelation now. Don't make me get into revelation now. Is he going to remove your candlestick? The light that he lit in you? He said the light that's in you be darkness. How great is that dark? How great is that darkness? Ooh, but if you're really his, if you're rooted, Paulie, if you're really a part of the church, because we're going to get in touch. We're blaming a lot on the church right now. The devil is trying to make a mockery out of the church. But a lot of people that's falling, a lot of people that's cutting up, and not all of them, but most of them, not even the church at all. They're not saved at all. Doing all manner of wickedness. We're going to deal with it. They know doctrine. They've been in church. Their parents drugged them to church. They've been in church. They've been sitting under the word. But they ain't never really received it for themselves. They ain't never really met the king of glory. Their hearts never really been changed. And we're going to get into it. It never really been resuscitated by the Holy Spirit, Paul. Ooh, God, he's not living on the inside. We're going to give you a chance to be, ooh, be filled with it tonight. Be filled with it without a shadow of a doubt. Be filled with it, y'all. That you make a difference. Ooh, not only in your life, but in the lives of those that's around. That you make a difference. That you make a difference. Man, y'all pulling so much out of me, man. We got to get to this word, man. God, in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But God tired of that, man. Church can't continue. I told you last time. 
Church will not continue to go on like it's going. It's not. It's like, it's, 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 it's like movie stars in there, man. Roll out the red carpet, man. You know what I'm saying? And Dallas going to have some celebrities in you, but I'm trying to get you to a place because if you have the heart of Jabez, if you really filled with the Ruach, you're going to deal with them a call. Oh, we're going to get in touch. You don't show no more on them. You oh, God, we over honoring folks, man. Got to understand that. Now, nah, sit down. We salute you. And we love all the things you do because the gifts and the, the callings is before repentance. You got talents and gifts that's from the, the most high. Yeah, we respect that. Sit down and hear that word, Paul. Woo. What can cleanse a young man with? By taking heed to thy word. He said, wash them in the word, man. He said, sanctify them with thy truth. What is truth? Thy word. Bringing the word back. He bringing the word back. Not just shouting and dancing. He's bringing the word back. He said, my prophets would have seek a word from me. Who? He said, my people would have hear my voice and their hearts would have. God. Why are their hearts not turned? Are they really seeking a word from him? A word somebody taught them. Deep calls out to deep. Deep calls out to deep. Deep calls out to deep. Let God get you in a place to be a blessing like Jabez. The only way to be a blessing is to get in that word, Paul. Ooh, that word. That word and God promised in Jeremiah to change our heart. He said, this was the covenant, y'all, that I would make with the house of Israel after those days, saying the Lord, I will put my law in their hearts and write them. I will put my law in their minds and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Ooh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Before I go, I have in my notes, God tired of this Western European model doing church. 30 minute church service. Paul was preaching for hours. Preaching so long that a little boy fell out the window and almost died. <laughs> but when you're preaching truth, you not only come with word, but you come with the power of the Holy Ghost in demonstration. Paul went down there and what? Heal that ball. Get back up. Who get back up? Who brought him back to life, y'all? God confirming the word. You got to get back to the word. Church is going to change whether we want it to or not. Because a lot ain't going to want to change. They ain't going to want to go. Ichabod. Their life going to start raveling. It's going to start unraveling right before you are. And you looking at them and they're preaching and they're talking this and they're talking that. But their life unraveling, unraveling. All kind of things going on. All kind of things. Scandals. All kind of things. Life unraveling. No power in that, man. No power in that, man. Submit to where the spirit going, Paul. That's the direction is going. He's bringing back truth. He said, I'm going to cause strong delusion. He said, for them that don't want the truth and love pleasure. They got a lot of love and pleasure. He said, they're going to be deceived by this delusion. He said, that they might be the words of God. That's not no man talking. That's not no angel talking. That's the most high. Man. Because he's tired of the fool. He's 
out of the foolish. He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Ezekiel 36, 26, 27. You're about to go in right quick and deal with this spirit issue. The spirit issue. The spirit issue. I have in my notes. Oh, Lord. I'm not tired of that word, huh? Y'all tarry with me a little while, man. Let's get in this word, man. And we're going to come back next week with some more of that thing, man. We're going to go deep into this prayer because God want to bless you. He got a blessing for you. But let's deal with the hard work first because the blessing coming. <laughs> you will be blessed. It's not that you might be blessed. No, you will be blessed. It's not me that's speaking it. It's in the word. You will be blessed. I promise you. I promise you. Not standing on my words, but on his words. Woo! Woo! He said, I would withhold no good thing from them that walk upright before me. You got no choice but to be blessed. If a man weighs pleasing, huh, Shane? Woo! God. But let's get into it, man. Our first point. Last time we didn't even get to it, Paul. But we're going to deal in continuing these points, y'all. Quickly, we want to talk about where and what is really our hearts so we can bring forth. Where and what is really is your heart? Because a lot of us point here. Your physical heart is not the heart that God is talking. Your physical heart only pumps blood. <laughs> but he's talking about another heart. Do you know where that heart is? Do you know what is really that heart? Because we're going to see how important it is. Because if you understand that, Paulie, you understand the scriptures when he said, we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. You would understand when he said, he said, oh, what? how he said, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is so awesome in how he does. And if we understand these things, you know what I'm saying? We're going to understand what's really going on within ourselves. Within ourselves. You know what I'm saying? What is really our hearts so that we can bring forth change. That's what he says, man. He said, examine yourself. He said, examine yourself to see if you really in the faith. How can you do that if you don't know what your heart is? Because he said, out of the heart flows what? The issue. So if you don't understand your heart, and we're going to get into it because no man can understand it, but if you don't know where it's at, if you don't know what it is, how can you correct it? And we just read the text and we're going to go back to it on how to correct it. He said, I'm going to give you a new heart. <laughs> Last time we went into it, we talked about how God wants us to live inwardly, outwardly, and not outwardly, inwardly. Because that's how we've been living. Not understanding, Paul. What, if, what is our heart? What is our heart? You know what I'm saying? Not understanding what really is our heart. I have in my notes, man, that our hearts, y'all, is the very seats or the housing of both our souls 
of both our souls and our spirits. And you have a soul. You have a spirit. And you also have a body. You are made as a trichotomous being, just like your father. He said, I have made them. Let us make man in our image after our own likeness. You prove the Godhead. <laughs> how you could be three, but yet still be one. Because that's how your father is. God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, one divine God, one divine essence, but yet, woo, three divine persons, but yet still one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Monotheistic belief, not polytheistic. Not multiple gods, but one God. When you call one, they all look at you. <laughs> That's deep, man. But you prove it. You prove it because you got a spirit. You got a soul. And you got a body. And in the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, I think, chapter 5. And you could go check it out. But for the sake of time, I'm just flowing with it. And that's what he said. He said, he said, he said, I, wanna, I want you to be blessed in your soul, in your spirit. That's what he said. Jesus even talks about it in going deep, man. You know? But let's stick to it so we could get into it right quick. I have in my notes, meaning that our souls and our spirits, y'all, are the seats within, ooh, that's what I have in my notes, that our souls and our spirits are seated within our hearts. It's seated within our hearts. Meaning that our souls and our spirits, y'all, are housed on the inside of our hearts, Paul. And that's why the scripture says, y'all, the scripture says, you know what I'm saying? In the book of Hebrews, that the word of God, y'all, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, is able to pierce within the heart, able to pierce inside the heart, y'all, dividing what? Both soul. Both joint and marrow. Even able to do what? Judge the intent. Able to do what? Discern the heart. So when things flowing out of your heart and Jesus talks about it, let me go to it right quick. In the name of Jesus. Jesus talks about it, y'all. He talks about it. Matter of fact, let's turn to it. I want y'all to see this. Why this is important. Mark chapter 7, verse 21 and 23. He talks about the heart, man. Because when, when who is not, who is, is not what a man eat, Jesus was telling them. They was talking about them being unclean by the food they eat. And Jesus like, nah, that's not, that don't make a man unclean. He said, what's come out of the inside of man? What comes out of the heart of man? He said, out of, comes out of the heart of man. What? Y'all, what he say? For, with, for from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts. Sexual immorality. Uh, um, immortality. Sexual immor immorality. Death, murder, adultery, covetedness, wickedness, deceit, sensual, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, y'all. All these evil things come from within and they defile the Bible tell us guard our heart but how can you guard something you don't know so when these things come out of your heart they are coming out of your soul they are coming out of your spirit what is your soul your mind your will and your emotion and we talked about it last time it's, it's majority your mind y'all and it's not your physical mind, which is your brain, but it's your subconscious. That part of you that don't sleep, that keep on thinking. That part of you that dream. <laughs> That's your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is supposed to lead your physical mind, which is your brain, y'all. And we're supposed to live inwardly, outwardly. But how can you do that 
if your spirit is dead? Oh, God. How can you do that if you're spiritually dead? And Romans talk about us being spiritually dead, having spirits that's like stone, man. I love how Lecrae said it. He said, before I was saved, he said, I was a walking zombie. <laughs> we got people because when you're spiritually dead, Romans said you can't even understand the things of God, nor can it. You're carnal minded. Your spirit is dead. Our spirit is the connector to God. It would, it would get information from God and relay it to the soul. But your soul turned to your spirit and your spirit dead. So your soul turned back to the flesh and do the things of the flesh. Oh, God. But once you understand that you can be spiritually alive and be not just living in this world, but be alive to God. Not just alive to the things of the world. Not just alive in the existing in this world. Nah, but be alive to God. Be able to hear God. Be able to understand God. The Holy Spirit bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. The Holy Spirit comes in and resuscitates your spirit. Breathe life into your spirit. That's how he takes out that stony heart, y'all, by giving you a new spirit, he said. Look at it in Ezekiel. He said, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. That scripture continues. He said, I will put my spirit in you. The Holy Spirit will breathe life into your spirit. And we know the Holy Spirit is God, so the Holy Spirit is the law. The scriptures was wrote by the Most High, wrote by the Spirit of God. The Bible said that the Holy Spirit moved upon holy men to write the scriptures. Is God breathed, they are noustos in the Greek, y'all. Coming from the breath of God. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The Ruach, the Holy Spirit, breathing, hovering, just like he hovered in the beginning. And that's what changed us. We got to be born again. He said, he told Nicodemus, you can't even see the kingdom of heaven unless you be born again. Not born of flesh, not born of men, Paulie. Not of the will of men, but the will of the Most High God, born of the Spirit. Receiving his Ruach. How do you receive? Through his death, burial, and resurrection. Through believing. He said, one believe it unto righteousness and confess it unto salvation. You got to believe that he died. You got to believe that he rose. He died for your sin, for my sin. Why? Because we all sin. And the wages of sin is death. One sin in the Greek when you go and read. He said, if you broke one of my commandments, you done broke them all. We none could fulfill the law. Only one did it. And that's Jesus. Right. And he came down to live a sinless life. And he said, if you just confess that you done done wrong. And I'm giving you the gospel early. But if you confess. Because we all done done wrong. He said, I'm going to forgive you of your sins. I'm going to wash them. He said, and I'm going to send the paraclete. He said, I'm going to fill you with my spirit. I'm not going to leave you alone. The Holy Spirit is going to come and live in you and resuscitate your spirit so you can have the law within your heart. And no man going to have to tell you what to do. When you do wrong, you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You're going you gonna, you gonna to quench the Holy Spirit. You're going to feel conviction, man. Because the Spirit is living on the inside of you. But he said, all you got to do is believe. 
For by, by, by what? For by grace are you saved. Through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Christ, you put your trust in him. Just like you're putting your trust in that chair. You sat down in that chair. You ain't checked the legs. You trusted that it was going to hold you up. Jesus said, can you trust me? And he said, when you trust me like that, I'm going to fill you with my spirit. I'm going to breathe on you like he did to the disciples. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send down the paraclete with fire and tongues, man. Ooh, God in the name of Jesus. And fill you up. And that's what God's going to do in these last days. He's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Man, this is good. Ooh, we talked about how important the heart is, y'all. Because God's discernment is much different from man. Because God is able to see and discern the heart. And Jesus told us, Paul, I'm going to get that nugget and we're going to hurry up and and move, man. Paul, what I'm dealing with? With the time? Shut it down in a few, man. Yeah. Y'all bear with me a little bit. Ooh, let's go a little deeper. But we're going to cover it next week. I ain't going to rush it. We're going to go deep into it next week and we're going to get into this prayer. That's where I really want to be. Oh, God. But I got to deal with first things first, y'all. But he could bless you, man. Because there's no use of having the blessing, Paul. And that's what I wanted to say with the church. They teaching them, man, how to, how to seek the hand of God. Not seek his they know how to receive blessings. The church is blessed, especially in the city. And the ball eating, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The ball not to receive from the hand of God. But when God looked down, there's no real heart change. Nothing but carnality going on. But all they want to do is be blessed. God, they get in the cart with the horse. And God don't want that for us. I was in my, my studies and he just began to pressure me and show me. He say, son, the money, the cause and the things, they allow those things to be more value than them. <laughs> more value than them. And they got me on the inside of them. The Holy Spirit. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one who owned the cattle on a thousand hills. The one who's able to breathe life and raise the dead. They got me on the inside of them. He said, I want them to understand that they are more valuable than these things. You see me, I want to be in a place to where I'm more valuable than these things. Because you, you cannot be blessed when you're really walking. Abraham was blessed. Isaac was blessed. Jacob was blessed. I preached the message to Philly, man, that God wanted to bless Jacob so much, he came down himself and wrestled with Jacob. <laughs> it was all about a blessing, Paulie. God wrestling with the one he loved. He didn't wrestle with Esau with the one he hated. That's how much God wanted to bless Jacob. Oh, God in the and that's how much he want to bless us. But he want us to understand that we are more valuable. I want to be able to, to be so valuable. Because I'm going to be blessed and I'm already blessed and you're going to be blessed. But I want to be so valuable in the life of people, Paul, to where they put me on one side and put money and things on the other side. And they look at it and they say, I'm going to go. With you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Not because of me, but who lives on the inside of me, man. Not because of me, in spite of me, but the king of glory lives on the inside. The ancient of days. The one who said, land, come forth. <laughs> oh, 
Do you know who lives on the inside of you, man? Ooh, God, in the name of Jesus, you're more valuable than these things. You're more valuable than these things. I was going through it and I said like this. It's like this. The clothes don't make me look good. I make the clothes. And what God wants you to understand is that the blessing and the tangible things don't make you look good. You make it look good. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. They let me make them look good. Pauly? My heart's not right. The most high seed. The most high seed, and he's tired of it. You're going to begin to see many fall. Trust what I'm telling you, man. But he brought you here tonight so that you don't be one of them. <laughs> oh, you're going to be a blessing for his glory. You're going to be a blessing for his glory. I have in my notes, man, that with the help and the wisdom of Satan, because Jesus gave us the game, he said, judge the fruit. You know what I'm saying? We get caught up judging the fruit. But the fruit of people action, the fruit, the fruit of what they're doing and, and what the, the actions they leave behind, Paul, and at a time that was good. But I believe when Jesus said, judge the fruit, he said, judge the fruit, not of the actions, but the fruit of the heart. The fruit of the heart. Because actions collide. They could fake it <laughs> and never make it. Oh, God. You could fake it and never make it. Yeah, I know you heard it say, fake it till you make it, but you could fake it and never make it. And, never make it. and when you're faking it, you only could fake it for so long. Because your heart going to be revealed. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. It's going to begin to be revealed in your walk. You ain't going to be able to hide it. He said, surely your sin going to find you out. His eyes go to and forth throughout the earth. Darkness is light unto him. Oh, he sees everything. It's not a single thing that he can't see. It's not a single place that we can hide from him. David said, where can I hide from thy spirit? Even if I go in hell, thou live there. If I make my bed in heaven, thou art there. If I go and hide under a rock, he said, you are there. Where can you run? He sees it all, Paul. That's why Paul said we lay aside every weight that's so, that's so easily beset. We lay it down because we run in this race to win. You know? We ain't trying to win trinkets and honors from men. We trying to win a crown from the most high of glory, man, so we could throw at his feet in heaven. Paulie, I want to hear well done, thou, ooh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear, and I'm going to throw it at his feet. The blessing to be blessed, not only on the earth, but in heaven as well. We want to win in both places. Why? Because he's the God of both heaven and earth. Heaven is coming down. <laughs> and it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. You know what I'm saying? So we got to understand that. And we about to shut it down. But just to give you a little game and wisdom, the Bible said, try the spirit by the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because in these days, y'all, with the increase of knowledge, it's hard to judge the fruit of action, Paulie. It's hard to judge the fruit of action. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. With the increase of knowledge that Daniel prophesied about in the wisdom of Satan, y'all, also all different doctrines of devils that's flooding the internet and flooding the pulpits and churches. They bring forth counterfeit fruit, y'all, that look real, 
and sound right. But their hearts are far from it. It's not of God at all when you weigh it out. When you weigh it out. When you weigh it out. Father, we thank you Woo, for what you're doing, God. In these last days, giving us eyes to see and ears to hear. Oh, Father, let us hear what the Spirit is saying, God. He said, for I, the Lord, search the heart and test the minds, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit is doing. Out of the heart issue. When we come back next week, we're going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper, y'all, into dealing with this prayer of Jabez. Now God want to bless you. But we got to put first things first so we could do this thing right for the glory of God. There's no sense in doing it wrong. There's no sense in getting blessed and having the blessings, but you're wrong with God. You're doing it for nothing. You have it for nothing. Who you going to affect in the world? We see a lot that got money, but not affecting nobody. Especially our people. The synagogue of Satan laughing at them, Paulie. Got tons of money, but making no change in the lives of their people. God want different. He wants you, when you get it, you're going to make change, brother. You're going to be like Abraham. You're going to teach the youngsters. He say, Abraham, I'm not going to hide nothing from you because I know you're going to teach it to them that's coming under you. Oh, God. Who oh, received it? Receive it. He's going to bless us again. But we're going to be blessed, right? We're going to hold a scepter. He said, a scepter shall not depart from Judah, Ms. Dawn. Who is not going to depart? <laughs> the glory is returning. It's Ichabod everywhere else, y'all. It's Ichabod in these other churches. It's Ichabod where they're not standing on truth. And we're going to see some Gentiles, so don't get it wrong. They're going to stand up on the truth. And they got a lot standing up on the truth. Preaching this thing. Where the real people of God stand up. You heard it. You understand. You on TikTok. And they doing all in their power to hide it. Pastor just talked about it. God is making kings raise up and tell you who you are. Man. God making rulers raise up and tell you who you are, man. This man got up and said, my whole country, man. Putin, man, you know what I'm talking about. He said we going to follow the teaching. Black Jew. Ooh. What's happening? God is shaking and doing what? Bringing it all back to what? The truth. <laughs> Every lie shall fall, y'all. There's nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Go read it in Luke 18. There's nothing that's not going to be revealed. All lies is going to fall. Will you stand on the side of truth? Because when he's coming back, that's what he's coming back with a name written upon him. Oh, God. Faithful, Paulie. I see he's coming back for. Because strong delusion will fall upon them. Not the truth. Don't want the truth. Or love us. Let that not be us. Let that not be us for the glory of God. Let that not be us for the glory of God. <laughs> God in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you for your word. Your engrafted word. That's able to save our soul. Father, they heard the gospel loud and clear. 
but there's none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He said, we none do right. He said, if you broke one law, you done broke them all. And he said, the wages of sin is debt. The soul that sin must die. Must die. It's not that they might die, but they must die. It's already written. But somebody want to die in your place. He want to die in your place. It's like a man going to court on a murder charge and getting judged. And they're going to give him life. They're even talking about giving him the electric chair. But another man walk in the courtroom and say, Your Honor, I'm going to die in that place. Yeah, they sinned. They lied. They lusted. They stole. They're not perfect, but I didn't live a perfect life for them. And all they got to do is receive me. He say, all of who are weary and laden, come to me and I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to make you right with the Father. I'm going to wrap you with my righteousness and I'm going to take upon your sin. He say, only believe. He said, who shall believe our report? We hear it as cliche all the time, but will you believe? Will you believe? Will you put your trust in him? Will you say, Father, I believe in all that you done done for me? And I take it as face value. Because you did die for me on that cross. You did wash my sins and made them pure. Ooh, God, even though they was dirty, Lord, he who the sun set free is free indeed. So, Daddy, we thank you for what you did through your son coming down and purge us. So, Lord, we come before you knowing that we are not clean within ourselves. So we lay our hearts bare before we ask you to save us. Fill us up with your spirit. Make us new. Make us new, Daddy. So repeat after me. Say, Father, I ask you to come down and do what you said. You said that if I confess my faults before you, that you would wash me, make me clean. Fill me with your spirit. Give me a new heart. Write your laws on my heart. Make me new for your glory. And Father, I thank you for the death and the burial and the resurrection of your son. Fill me with your spirit now. And give me a heart of Jabez for your glory and for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, for his glory. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for your word, man. Jesus. God, thank you, Lord. That's all. That's all. I'm going to ask everybody, I know we don't do this often, but I'm going to ask everybody to come to the altar tonight. Everybody just come down here to this altar. We're going we're gonna to get locked up and linked up tonight. I 
I want everybody to get linked up. Amen. I surrender all. You know, tonight Bryce talked about Jabez being more honorable than his brothers and understanding that even in the midst of him being a fourth in a way and with a name that in and of itself meant to bear pain he was a light many of us as he said in, in, in his awesome preaching we carry in stuff that makes us a byword in many ways and but but tonight as he prayed that prayer and for us to to renew and restore our relationship with the most high and how we talked about our hearts tonight tonight you're holding the hand of somebody that has a heart issue you're holding the hand of somebody that has a issue and a situation in their heart that they need resolution for so i'm gonna ask you guys tonight to pray for the hand that you're holding pray for the people that are in this circle so as we pray tonight i want you to not just think about yourself the word of god says that we esteem others higher than ourselves so let us pray not for ourselves tonight let us pray for those that are in this circle I know we don't know everybody's situation and everybody's circumstance, but this is where we plug into Most High who knows all things. So let us pray. You pray in your own breath as I pray. Eternal and all wise God, Yahweh, we come to you just thanking you tonight, Lord God, for the man of God that reminded us of even our heart issues. So Father, tonight we come praying we come lifting each other up and laying each other's issues at the altar, not only just our own. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you be the Lord over every situation in our lives. You said in your word for us to pray about all things, pray without ceasing, Lord God, and to honor you in all our ways. So we come to you right now, Lord God, confessing our sins before you, Lord God, and bringing our brothers and sisters before your throne, Lord God. Wherever there's lack, Lord God, we pray that you provide. Wherever there's hurt, we pray that you provide healing. Wherever there's chaos, we pray that you rain peace upon their lives tonight. Father, we know that you know every desire, every need, Lord God. And that you have the resources to, to fill those needs, to fill those gaps. So we pray right now that you rain your holy resources down in the midst of these lives lord god that they be full in every measure so we just thank you tonight we pray that you allow minister deacon bryce and his wife lord god to have safe travels back to lafayette and to return again lord god on fire for the word to continue to take us deeper into the treasures of your word lord god that we can find those jewels that you want us to have in our lives, Lord God, that allow us to create and develop our own worth, Lord God, that our lives will be worth more than the things that we have. So we just thank you tonight. We praise you for, again, the, the assignment that you've given us here in Dallas, Lord God, that we may be life changers. We may be church changers, Lord God. We may be a, a destiny changers, Lord God, in this place. So we thank you and we praise you tonight for being so amazing, so wonderful, and so awesome. It is in the name of your son, our matchless savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, we pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen.